Grand Prairie and District Chamber of Commerce values our relationships with all levels of government, including the County of Grand Prairie. Open communication with our political partners helps the Chamber in our advocacy efforts on behalf of our members. Many of those meetings are behind closed doors, but events like this allow our membership and the general public a glimpse into some of the topics discussed and the cooperation between our organizations. Our guest speaker is Leanne Beaupre. Leanne was elected to County Council in 2004 as Councillor for Division 3, the Grand Prairie South area. Leanne became the Reeve in June of 2012 and was reaffirmed to the position in October 2013 to present. Leanne is committed to the economic growth of the South Peace. She is past chair of the Board of Directors of the Community Futures, an organization dedicated to helping business and business owners, youth and communities to diversify their local economies. She is the chairperson for the Municipal Planning Commission and a member of the Assessment Review Board. Leanne has also served as Standing Issues Committees for the Alberta Association of Municipal Districts and Counties. As well, she is a board member of the Grand Prairie Regional Agricultural Exhibition Society and the chairperson for the Weyerhaeuser Environmental Advisory Committee. Leanne has been involved with several major infrastructure projects, such as the High Speed Wireless Internet Project, the Claremont Community School and Wellington Resource Center, the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum, and the Crosslink County Sportsplex. Leanne is married to Brad. They have two sons, Tyson and Morgan, who is married to Terry. Leanne and Brad are also expecting their first grandchild later this summer, so that's pretty exciting for them. On that, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Reeve of the County of Grand Prairie, Leanne Beaupre. Well, thanks, Dennis. Yeah, actually, I'm looking forward to be called Granny Tom, so they can call me whatever they want. That's, it's a pleasure to be able to be a grandparent. Uh, so thank you very much, and welcome, everyone. It's truly an honor to be here with you today, and I'd like to recognize that we are meeting on Treaty 8 and traditional territory. I want to thank the Chamber for hosting the county and providing this opportunity to talk to you about where we've been over the past year and what our plans are as we move forward. I'm pleased to introduce members of our county council to you, and I ask that you stand as I say your name, and then please hold your applause until the last person is named. So uh, Harold Bulford, please, if you'd stand. Ro Daryl Beeston, Ross Sutherland, Bob Marshall, Peter Harris, Brock Smith, Karen Roosevelt, who is our newest counselor, and our chief administrative officer, Bill Rogan. And our, unfortunately, Corey Beck, who is our other counselor, is una unable to uh, attend today. So thank you very much for coming. Also with us today is Chris Workington, Member of Parliament for Grand Prairie Mackenzie. If you just give a wave, Chris. And we're fortunate to have two of our provincial representatives with us as well. Uh, MLA Grand Prairie Wapiti, Wayne Drysdale. MLA Grand Prairie Smokey, excuse me, Todd Lowen. As well as uh, from the west part of the county, Chief Eugene Horseman from Horse Lakes First Nations. Thank you. And I welcome all the other council members from all of our other neighboring communities as well. I'd also like to recognize our staff, uh, the county staff that is, for work that they have do, and some of them are with us today. And I also want to start off by this afternoon by paying tribute to county employees, employees in all of our neighborhoods, neighboring communities, pardon me, for coming together to help for people of Fort McMurray and the communities of high level, Little Smoky, and that were also impacted by wildfire. County staff, as part of Grand Prairie Regional Emergency Partnership, GPREP, a partnership of six local communities, were actively involved during this critical time. Our local municipalities joined forces with other Alberta communities, 
And what we saw was Alberta at its finest, at one of its most challenging times. The way in which people came together was truly an unbelievable show of compassion and really speaks to the kind of province we live in, the kind of people that Albertans are, and certainly the kind of people we are here in the North. I ask you to join me to thank all of those who were involved in responding to this crisis. <laughs> you may not be aware, but this building here that you're in today is actually an evacuation centre for rural and urban residents, pets and livestock in the event of an emergency. I hope that we'll never have to use it for that purpose, but I'm certainly glad that it's here. Again, I'd like to uh, thank the Chamber of Commerce for organizing today's event. We're proud of our relationship that we have with the Chamber and the partnerships that we've shared on many initiatives. This year, the County of Grand Prairie has contracted the Chamber and Community Futures Grand Prairie and Region to conduct a comprehensive business visitation program in the county. This important and unique partnership promotes and supports local business by better understanding their successes and challenges so that we can be more responsive. This initiative will attract new business and help business stay competitive. Thinking like business people, our staff is always brainstorming about innovative ways we can help cut through the red tape. Our public web map has recently been upgraded and in making it more user friendly. You can print maps, view aerial maps, and access a range of data 24-7 right at your fingertips. We've also incorporated innovation into other areas of our business. At Pipestone Creek Campground, we've married innovation with the environment by trialing solar panels to generate electricity at the campsites. We're also powering the Claremont Centre for Recycling and Waste Management was with solar power. Discussion about innovation leads into a conversation about the value of cooperative relationships and partnerships. Regional cooperation in this area has had a long history of success. Just look around. We are privileged to live in one of the most prosperous provinces and regions in Canada. And this wasn't by chance. Our quality of life is something we all need to be proud of. And I think it's fair to say that regional cooperation has been an important factor in that it recognizes and taps into the individual strengths of our local municipalities. You see, regional cooperation recognizes that we can take different paths to achieve common regional goals. It's a model that allows each municipality to plan in a way that works best for them and their citizens. Each municipality can focus on priorities and services that are important to their citizens and necessary for their community. The model recognizes that each community is unique. It taps into our individual strengths so that we can achieve great things for our region. That's the power of regional cooperation. Now we at the county understand the challenges that many people in this area are facing as a result of the economic downturn. People have lost their jobs, companies are cutting back, and we know, all, know that families and individuals are feeling the impact. During the County Council's budget deliberations in April, I can assure you that this was the top of mind for our Council with every decision we made. We are fortunate to live in an area in a diverse economy. Our forestry and agriculture sectors are strong, and the energy sector is stronger in our region than other areas in the province. Housing starts and building permits in the county are steady. Though down from last year, the kind of growth that we had in 2015 is not sustainable and puts a lot of strain on infrastructure and services. Our current slower but steady growth is certainly more sustainable over the long term. It's important that the county continues to make it attractive for companies to do business in this area. One way we do this is to ensure that we have the infrastructure and services in place to support the operations and to support the quality of life for their employees and families. This means budgeting responsibly, responsibly pardon me, and investing responsibly so our area grows and prospers. We know that fair property taxes are important to our ratepayers. I commend Council and Administration for being able to keep residential tax increases low 
by not raising our mill rate and only capturing the market value and growth of 2%. How do we do this? Well, we keep our taxes low by being prudent and smart with spending on our, of our, on our investments and in our daily operations. In this economic environment, our focus is on the necessities. In our recent budget, we were able to find cost savings of over $4.4 million in road pro construction projects and fuel. That's through planning and prioritizing. This brings me to a discussion on linear taxation. We are very pleased that in May, the province announced that it will keep re linear uh, revenue in the municipality in which it is collected. The province has encouraged municipalities to share linear revenues through cost-sharing agreements. We agree. This is a collaborative practice that the county has had long in place with the city, our local towns and villages, and Horse Lake First Nation. The reason why most of these taxes are collected by rural Alberta is because most linear infrastructure is located in rural Alberta. About 75% of the roads, 60% of Alberta's bridges, as well as pipelines and utility lines. And so as such, rural municipalities receive the majority of this revenue. Rural municipalities, including the County of Grand Prairie, are challenged with significant and escalating costs of maintaining, repairing, building and rebuilding this infrastructure, which is strained or damaged by the industry. And we don't have the population base to cover it. Those, pardon me, the population tax base to cover those costs. In addition, rural residents can be adversely Im impacted by the effects of industrial activity. They deal with the noise, the smell, the dust, land that can't be developed, and so on. This industry is vital to our local economies as well to Alberta's economy as a whole. And so is in this infrastructure that supports it. Industry and agriculture rely on these roads and bridges to get their products to market. Those who make their living from these industries and those who travel on these roads every day to go to school, to work, county and city residents, and travelers who happen to be going through our area rely on the county to ensure that infrastructure is maintained and safe. The county has about 3,700 kilometers of roads in comparison to about 500 in the city of Grand Prairie. And we have 317 bridges, the highest number of bridges of any municipality of the province. This year, Council invested $21.2 million into road construction projects. In the next five years, we'll be required to spend over $30 million for bridges, upgrades or replacements. The province currently doesn't provide any funding for these bridges. Urban municipalities have access to other sources of revenue, such as franchise fees from utilities. The city also receives a significantly greater transportation grant for roads from the province. In addition, for 20 years through a revenue sharing agreement, the RSA, the county has annually paid the city to reflect the use of city facilities by county residents. This year that amount will be $1.07 million. The county also supports the city of Grand Prairie facilities through grants which was nearly $415,000 this year. My point is, there are different sources of income for municipalities. Some that go to urban areas, some that go to rural areas, some that go to both. I can appreciate that all municipalities want what's best for their citizens. However, what is important is that when we are discussing issues like revenue and linear taxation, we must look at the whole picture, not just one piece of it. Different sources of revenue must be considered, and expenses too. They must be factored into the equation when we're discussing municipal finances. So what's important to our residents? Well, we know from our residential survey that quality of life is a priority for those that live and work in the county. 95% of our residents rated their quality of life in the county as either good or very good. The county has a number of partnerships in place that support community vitality and the benefit of these cooperative agreements is that each community has a choice of services that are right for them. This allows for efficient and effective service delivery. Safety is a critical aspect of life, 
I know the crime rates are a concern of many of you. The County Regional Enforcement Services Department is one of the most comprehensive in the province. It consists of four separate units and includes five enhanced RCMP members, which of the county and funded another member, new officer this year. We use specialized equipment to patrol rural communities as well as extensive parks, trails, green space, and waterways. We also have five-year agreements with Hythe, Wembley, Sexsmith, and the MD of Greenview to provide peace officer and animal control officer services as well as a five-year agreement with Saddle Hills to provide animal control officers. We work with many of our neighboring municipalities in the area of emergency response and, and, excuse me, and firefighter training, supporting a safer region for all of us. Our partnerships vary and are based on the individual needs of each municipality. And all communities in Northwest Alberta just signed an emergency resource agreement to provide services to one another in case of an emergency. <clears throat> this year we contributed half a million dollars to the town of Sexsmith for a new fire hall. Our support builds on the strong partnerships that we've had with the town over the years. It plays a key role in ensuring we continue to meet growth and demand throughout the county. The county has had an agreement for over 23 years with Horse Lake First Nation to provide emergency response and more recently, firefighter training. It benefits everyone when we have trained personnel in different municipalities who could support one another during those times when we need that extra help. Most recently, we've partnered with the City of Grand Prairie to provide temporary services for animal adoption over the next six months, giving the SPCA time to develop a sustainable business plan while ensuring local animals without homes continue to be cared for. Animals can be adopted at our current facility where staff deliver pound services. You've seen numerous examples of how we tailor agreements with other municipalities based on each other's, each one's unique needs. These needs change and through our agreements we're able to be responsive to those changes. Quality of life also includes creating healthy communities. In 2016, over $5 million was directed into local, funding local recreation, culture, and nonprofit organizations within the city, the county, the region for programs and operations. That includes the Grand Prairie Public Library, local small urban community libraries, the Grand Prairie Museum, the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum, and many more, including non for profit organizations like STARS, Odyssey House, and Serenity Place. We're investing in two softball fields at Crosslink County Sportsplex. This addition will add to the overall capacity of, ball to, of the ball community by alleviating league play on city diamonds. And as part of our uh, commitment to the provincial trail system, by the end of phase two, the county will have invested over a million dollars to develop the Wapiti Dunes trails. The, these trails will eventually link, link the county, city, and MD of Greenview networks. We are part of a regional ma recreation master plan, which will coordinate regional recreation facilities, and has, which has also recently been uh, released to the public for consultation. And we support region recreation in rural areas and urban, small urban communities, where these recreation centers are the heart of the community. Bazanson Community Center, Rio Grande Events Center, Teepee Creek Ag Events Center, Claremont Agricultural Society Adventure Park, Evergreen Park, and Nighthawk Ski Hill are some of those that we have funded. We see a direct connection between quality of life for all ages and the work of our Family and Community Support Services Department. This year we had an increase to the FCSS funding from the province. That's good news. And as this funding reaches more moms and babies to children in preschool to seniors requiring home care. And we're pleased to welcome Hythe FCSS and provide services in their community. We also have contracts with Beaver Lodge and Wembley to provide services and home care support. 
The well-being of our residents is also dependent on having good health care. The County of Grand Prairie, along with Beaver Lodge Heights, Sexsmith Wembley, and Horace Lake First Nation make up the South Peace Physician Attraction and Retention Committee. The goal is to attract physicians to practice in the county. The county provides a $10,000 incentive to any doctor who starts a practice here and stays for three years. We're also lobbying the provincial government to open a clinic in Claremont and to replace the much needed Beaver Lodge Hospital as well for the early completion of the Grand Prairie Regional Hospital and Education Center and the, uh, the radiation vaults as well as the cancer clinic. The county is growing. People are moving here. Companies are locating here. We need smart growth and sustainable growth. And that means careful planning today to manage our footprint. Claremont is an example of smart growth. It's being developed as a sustainable, high-density community that brings business and residents together in a planned way that manages development, reduces infrastructure expenses, and considers our environment. We have in the county some of the best and most productive farmland in the world. We have a responsibility to manage and properly manage that land. The type of settlement that we're seeing in Claremont is smart, responsible planning. And that's the kind of planning that attracts investors. This community thinks long term, from children to seniors. The county recently allocated over $450,000 to a new play school that will be housed in the kindergarten to grade eight school under construction in Whispering Ridge. Also under construction is the Grand Spirit Foundation 150 unit seniors complex. He is proud, proud, pardon me, to have contributed $700,000 dollars in service. Also under construction is $26.3 million of wastewater infrastructure project that will benefit the county and the city. Through provincial grants, the county will be investing $15 million towards this project. This project involves linking the Claremont Lagoon to Aquaterra's wastewater treatment plant and the construction of a trunk line, trunk sewer line, pardon me, serving Grand Prairie's west side. I think this is a good time for us to acknowledge or for me to acknowledge, pardon me, our Economic Development Officer, Chris King, who was recently recognized by his provincial peers as Economic Development Officer of the Year. So in closing, I want to talk about amalgamation. More importantly, why the county, Sexsmith, Beaver Lodge, Wembley, Hythe, and the MD of Greenview have all stated that they do not support it. Why, what we do support is working together to address region-wide solutions for municipal challenges while respecting the autonomy and decision-making of individual councils. Councillors that sit on these councils are close to their people and they know their communities best. These individual councils have many strengths and part of that strength comes from the politicians that are accessible, <coughs> excuse me, that are accessible and are in touch with the local needs. The county conducted research to look at amalgamation cases studied across Canada. What we wanted to see was, has this worked in other communities? Evidence was very clear that in many cases, involuntary amalgamations do not reduce costs or improve efficiencies. In fact, in most cases, the potential benefit put forward by those favoring amalgamation failed to materialize. Some Canadian communities are now looking to de-amalgamate because they simply cannot deliver services in a cost-effective manner. Just a few months ago, the Fraser Institute released a document with the same findings. Larger bureaucracies incur much greater costs than smaller districts where governments enter into cooperative agreements with other municipalities. Municipal partnerships and cooperative agreements make sense on a number of levels. They give municipalities the autonomy to make fiscally responsible decisions that are right for their communities. They promote prosperity and vitality for the whole region. When I look at this region, I see many, many successes. Regional cooperation and partnerships have played a great role in that success. So in closing, I want to thank you all for joining us today. I also want to wish you a very safe summer season. 
and I encourage you to get out and try some of our campgrounds, recreation areas, and culture that we have right in our backyard. And thank you very much for listening to my inaugural uh, uh, address here today for the, for the county. And I have one person I did forget to recognize is the past reeve of the County of Grand Prairie, Everett McDonald, who's sitting back at one of the tables. There hasn't been a, uh, a county address since Everett gave his last one in 2012.